In more than 300,000 churches across America, this is what Sunday morning looks like. But there's something different about Peace Fellowship Church, a majority African-American congregation in Washington, D.C. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your mind, your soul, and your strength. And While the Word of God may be the same, what's surprising is who's delivering it. Compassion, discipline, holiness, outreach, evangelism. How do we, what are we supposed to be doing? A 33-year-old Korean-American. There's something about the way I do ministry fits well with them and resonates with them. And although I shouldn't fit in, I, I do. For the past year, Peter Chin has been pastor of Peace Fellowship. And to hear the congregation, it's a match made in heaven. He is very caring, very generous. I love Pastor Chin. I think he is a great leader, great pastor, real inspirational. Call to worship, Patrick's going to give it. But not everyone was enthusiastic at first. I really was hesitant initially solely because I was probably more toward getting an African-American here. Patrick Pete is an elder at Peace Fellowship, one of the members who chose Chen. If he hadn't come to the church and his resume had come through. And I hadn't and met was, him. And you hadn't met him and there was a picture attached. I, no, I would have been absolutely like, mm-mm. He's not coming here. No. I think the best thing that happened was I didn't see any picture of him before I met him. If that seems harsh, then consider this. Houses of worship remain some of the most segregated places in American life. Almost nine in ten churches have no racial diversity, a statistic that has barely changed since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. pointed it out in 1956. When you stand up on Sunday morning to sing, isn't it tragic that you stand in the most segregated hour of your Christian nation? And Peace Fellowship could have been no different. It was founded in 2001, specifically to serve an impoverished African-American section of Northeast Washington. So when the church was looking for a new pastor, no one was expecting Peter Chin to walk through the door. No matter how open this church is, I know people. Yeah. And I know they were sitting in, in the pews <laughs> like this saying, Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, show us what you're working with. Yeah, I kind of thought that too. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an extremely cynical person. And my, my mentality was, I'm just going to come and I'm going to bring it. Let's pray together. What he brought was an idea. Father, we thank you for this teaching. But it takes open-mindedness to look beyond stereotypes and generalizations that we've kind of inherited or heard from. And that takes a very conscious effort. No more so than with himself. The Yale graduate was supposed to go to medical school, but this Illinois native of immigrant parents found a different calling. What was number one in your family's household? It was definitely academics and excellence. That was a kind of religion. When they found out I was going to be a pastor, they were, I think, beyond disappointed. And where he planted his family, his wife and four young children didn't exactly sit well with them at first either. The only other Koreans you'll find here own the local fried chicken joint. It's a place rough enough that his home has been broken into several times. Why was it important for you to move into the neighborhood? I think there's a growing sense that we don't want to just um, build a church and, and invade into a community. We want to be a part of that and invest in it, not just with the church building, but with our very lives instead. When Chin was a boy, his father owned a small hat store in downtown Chicago. The only exposure I had to black people was really through um, my parents' workplace. And what and were those stories? They weren't encouraging. I mean, my father had been, you know, assaulted and robbed. No justice, no peace. In America, we often think of racial tension in black and white. But there is also a long history of hostility between African-American residents and Korean-American business owners. To an African-American, the first thing is you're thinking is that you're taking from us, you're not giving anything back. During the 1992 riots in Los Angeles, 2,300 Korean-owned stores were looted or burned. Human dignity! Where is your human dignity? I lived in Los Angeles and Washington during tense times. I remember my Howard University classmates boycotting Korean businesses 
because they felt disrespected by shop owners. You ain't got to be creeping. These tensions are even reflected in pop culture, in blockbuster movies like Menace to Society. Man, I always think we're going to steal something. But at Peace Fellowship, they're trying every Sunday to rewrite that script. I would not have intentionally went down the path that we went as a church, but what I learned once Pastor came is that diversity is a strength. And that's exactly what attracted new member Arcinda Edwards. The community doesn't look like him, but he cares for it. He prays for it. He preaches that we go out and reach those people. He would still deserve our best merely because he is God. That's something we don't often talk about. Is there an Easter message in your story? In terms of the relationship between African Americans and Korean Americans, it doesn't, the, the ending is not what you think. The relationship is not always going to be the way it's portrayed. I'm learning so much about what is possible and the potential for growth and the goodness that resides in people. Yeah.